Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to The Walk Live. Thank you so much for coming to this channel. You guys, I'm Sakima. For all of you who are new, thank you for stopping by. I hope you like what you see and what you hear. And for all of you who've been rocking with me since day one, you know, you know I love you and I appreciate you. Look at me. This is so... Look at that. That's disrespectful. This is <laughs> all over the place with it. Y'all, forgive me. I am not filming in the same area because I was just sitting here doing my homework and then some stuff happened and then I was like, I need to get on here right now. Um, but anyway, you guys, um, I would normally do, be doing the most at the beginning of the video, but I said I need to jump right into it. I don't even think I've done the full introductions. Lord Jesus. Okay, wait a minute. I said my name's Sakima. I said, welcome to the Walk Live. I said, you know, I appreciate my oldies and my newies. And, oh yeah, you guys, I post every Tuesday, so you guys be looking for that content. Hit that notification bell so that you do not miss an upload. Um, what else am I supposed to tell y'all? Mm. Oh yeah, uh, this channel, I post things, um, that are basically nuggets from the lessons and things that I, that, that I feel that God has shown me along my journey, along my walk with him. And uh, the things that I've learned have helped me chip away at some of the barriers in my path along my walk. And my hope is that it will help you as well. That is my hope. That is my hope. That's my hope. Basically, I'm just sharing my heart, sharing the words, sharing the lessons. That's just what this is, y'all. It's hot in here, y'all. Oh, my goodness. What am I I'm not going to turn the air on right now. It's going to be too hot. Lord, I mean, too loud, Jesus. <laughs> Y'all, help me. I've been up all day doing stuff, Jesus. Okay, that's another story. Let's get to the content. All right, so I want to start by reading Ephesians 6. I'm going to read 10 through, I guess, 10 through 18. I know, it's a lot. Let's get to it. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore having your loins gird about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the, the word of god praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching therefore unto with all oh watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. I know it was a lot. I know it was a lot. I know. Uh, and it was partly a lot because of the version I'm reading, which is the King James Version. Um, I do I like to start with the King James Version when I'm studying and then reference other versions to get a better understanding that's when I go into reading the commentary and all different types of things you know that I need to read to understand okay but basically this section is talking about being prepared this section is talking about putting on the full armor of God meaning fully submitting fully going in and making sure that you are prepared making sure that you um, are in prayer making sure that you are, you know, moving those things out of the way, setting those boundaries that you need to set so that you are ready, that you are making sure you are studying, studying your word, studying your word, not just, so I don't know what people think whenever they hear study to show yourself approved. Um, that almost is something that is, uh, it makes you think of, Okay, so I need to show the Lord that, you know, I'm holy enough. I'm righteous, you know. But this is not the only reason that we study. Yes, we study to show the Lord we love him, that we, that we want to learn about him, that this is an authentic relationship. But also, 
so that we are prepared, so that we can put put on the full armor of God. Because he's telling us clearly that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. While you out here fighting your employee or fighting your 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 boyfriend, uh, fighting your girlfriend, uh, fighting whoever. Sometimes we fighting our husbands, wives, uh, family. Uh, we need to know that this is a spiritual thing that we're fighting. We're fighting. It says, um, it says, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So while something may look like it's just your, your, your girl or your boy over there doing the most, Y'all, this is something deeper than that. This is something bigger than that, which is why we are often prompted to pray, why we're often prompted to be prepared, because this is no small thing. The enemy doesn't just get up, and I know I've said this before. He doesn't just get up and just give you a little, you know, something, you know, throw a little something at you and then see if it works. He is going hard in the paint, y'all. He is doing his work. He is doing his research. He's up doing his homework. He's a student. When it comes to causing your demise or trying to cause your demise. So, you guys, we have to be ready also. Um, so, I'm just going to say, as I was sitting here doing my homework, <laughs> I got a call from Latter-day Saint missionary. Praise the Lord. You know, bless the Lord for people who have zeal and who uh, are passionate you know, and who have settled on something that they believe. But it is very important for us because there are people who have settled on beliefs that are not true and that are just flat out wrong and a a a setup uh to cause a wedge between you and your faith and your submission and uh, to to God and His will and His love, uh, but it doesn't look like that initially. It does not present that way. When I say these boys were the sweetest boys, they had the sweetest voices. They sounded so sincere. I don't know about you, but I want those things that are bad for me to look that way. I want them to look like they're bad for me so that I can go ahead and just go the other way. Like, you look like a whole walking scary movie, nightmare on Elm Street situation. I'm going to go this way. But that is not how it presents. It does not present that way. And for some of you, you're like me. You have a heart. You know, you have a heart like me. And you are vulnerable to things like that. Vulnerable to kind things, sweet things. I was just telling the Lord today, I want... I like things that are sweet. Even when I was at the store looking at pictures and paintings in, in the, the art, um, you know, the what do you call it? The graphic something, art, wall, something. You know, the sayings, the different quotes and things that we put on our walls. I was, you know, I have a hard time. I'm already indecisive. And then secondly, I'm like, I like a certain feel to the, you know, what is being said. You know, uh, if you make a, if, if there's a statement there that I'm going to put on my wall, that's going to be a statement, obviously, that I'm going to stand for that I feel like I'm supporting that I've made. It's just like something I've made. I've made that statement. Um, I wanted to have a certain sweetness to it, you know, a, a sweetness, a, a godly sweetness to it or, or something, you know, I, that's me. I like that. I like sweet things. You know, I'm a sucker for that type of stuff. And so here these two kind but sweet boys calling me, wanting to tell me about Joseph Smith and Jesus as well. And, you know, if I had not been um, studying, if I had been, and I'm not saying I know everything. I'm not saying I know everything. I'm not saying you have to know everything in order to, you know, be successful at not being duped. <laughs> like, I'm not saying that. Because we go and we do what we can and we study and all that. The Holy Spirit is there helping us. We're never left alone in this. It's not like we are running this race on our own or fighting this fight on our own. The Holy Spirit is there. Okay, so that is one thing. Um, but 
what we have to remember is that we have got to do our part. We have got to do our best to be ready, to be prepared, okay? Um, all of the things that I had been studying on and meditating on with the Lord, they really started to come back to my remembrance. And, 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 the, and I paid attention as soon as the, you know, they called wanting to pray and they told me who they were and what they, what they were standing for. And as they went on in the conversation, I continued to pay attention and I continued to say, God, you know, I want this to be about you. I want to, to, to stay firm on what it is that you've shown me, what it is that you've told me uh, about you and about your truth, about your word. And um, let this conversation, you know, go the way that it needs to go. And, you know, it just, when I got through talking to them, just long story short, y'all, when I got through talking to them, it made me think about those of us who are doing just enough, just a little bit, you know, just, I now lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Amen. Like, give us this day our daily bread. Amen. There comes a point where we're called up, where we're called higher, we're called to go deeper because what lies ahead of, not because we just, you know, the Lord want us to have more work to do, but because what lies ahead of us requires that we are ready, that we know this. If not, we're going to get duped. And I'm going to go to Matthew chapter 13. Um... In this chapter, uh, so Jesus is speaking in parables. And after this first little parable that Jesus speaks, it, it, it this is the way I imagine it, y'all. The uh, disciples was like, uh, uh, why are you talking to the people in parables? You know, that's kind of confusing. And I wondered the same thing, you know, we, I've learned about parables growing up and all that. And I'm just like, really, Lord, like, cause help me out here. Cause this right here, you just gave me a whole story about something and I'm, I've got to dissect it and, and decode it. And I'm just like, Lord, what's happening? But when I read this part here, I'm like, well, look here, you give us the answer, Father. It says he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. That was King James Version. Let me <laughs> let me go over here to the Amplified Version so we can clear some of this up. So, same, Matthew chapter 13. I'll start at verse 11. Jesus replied to them, To you it, it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been granted. For whoever has spiritual wisdom because he is receptive to God's word, to him more will be given, and he will be richly and abundantly supplied. But whoever does not have spiritual wisdom because he has devalued God's word, even... What he has will be taken away from him. This is the reason I speak to the crowds in parables. Because while having the power of seeing, they do not see. And while having the power of hearing, they do not hear. Nor do they understand and grasp spiritual things. In them, the prophecy of Isaiah is being fulfilled, which says, You will hear and keep on hearing, but never understand. And you will look and keep on looking, but never comprehend. For this nation's heart has grown hard, and with their ears they hardly hear, and they have tightly closed their eyes. Otherwise, they would see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn to me, and I would heal them spiritually. Um, so, I'll stop there, but I encourage you to keep reading. But basically, right there, so... If we, if we value the word of God and we value uh, what it is that God wants to show us and teach us um, and, and how he wants to develop us, then 
that is when we are creating that space where God can continue to develop us and give us more and more and more. And that space where he can open us up to the things that we need to understand those, those things about the kingdom of heaven. Okay. You can't just throw it on somebody, you know, obviously there has to be that ground for people to, um, want to learn that, want to, want to accept that, want to understand that. But we have to create that area, that space, you know, we do that by reading our word. We do that by seeking God. We do that by opening up our lives to say, God, we want to learn about you. We want to know about you. How is it that we can do this? We're, we're, we're using all of our resources. We're, we're, we're going, we're looking at different, different sermons. We might be reading different books about, you know, you, we might be looking at different things on the history channel about things that happened back in that time. We might be reading about different groups. Um, like the Philistines or the Israelites or, you know, this, this, this is the way that we create that space for God to continue to develop us and to sow into us and give us the things that we need to understand the kingdom. Um, but when we don't do that and we do just the bare minimum, you know, I just I read a little bit. All right, great. You know, we will stay stuck on that for, for years, forever. And, and just we'll have that same regimen. I read a little that. And there we go. But the, the issue with that is the attacks do not grow lighter or stay uh, in this standard place where we're just going to stay right here. Since you only read one word a year from your word, we're only going to give you uh, one word issues, one word attacks. That is not how the enemy works. He is going to show up so well, so cunningly that you are going to have to have done your part. You can't stay in the place of only um, doing the bare minimum and, 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 and thinking that that's going to be okay. It's not to say anything against your journey and your walk, but you got to know that what's coming for you is more than what you are acting like here. It's more than what you're, you're, you're studying, what you're reading. But you've got to go in with that. And, and of course, over time, the Lord helps you, and, and it does not stay at a place of, oh, I'm studying to just you know learn about something because I don't know or because I'm confused about something. He begins to show you his love and help you understand his love. And he begins, he begins to show you how he's been trying to reach you how he's been trying to get you to understand things that you've read before, but you didn't understand them in certain ways. He'll show you things like that. Uh, for example, I have something marked in here um, that, that, that uh, I haven't marked the love of God because it, it this little uh, verse or few verses, they remind me of his love and how sweet he is. It says, and ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in the same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father, which speaketh in you. That right there helped me a lot in the time where I felt, oh my goodness, Lord, I am looking, I am studying, but you know, some of the stuff I'm not retaining. I feel so out of the loop. Maybe I'm just not good enough to do this. Maybe I'm just, who am I to do this? And, you know, who? why did you call me for this certain thing? And why did the Lord begin to remind me that he's doing this through me and in me and that I don't, I'm not alone. I'm not by myself. So that to me jumped out as the love of God to me. It's something sweet, something he's with me, you know? And so while I am reading and I'm learning different things, I'm, it's informative. It also is showing me his love. It grows into something more than what you initially start out with in your word. So don't look at this as something that is so huge that you are just defeated before you even start to get in there. Because it evolves because God does the evolving. He does the evolving. You don't have to get in there and just feel like you got to make yourself deep. Like, okay, hallelujah. And what does this word say? Like, that's not what this is. God is doing this through you. He loves you and he, he wants you to come to him and to learn more and more about him because there will be things that will be coming. There will be things along the way and, and this is not to scare you or anything but to prepare you. There will be. 
you are so anointed. You're so wonderfully blessed and fearfully made. And the Lord is, is, is doing great things through you. He's calling you for things. And so you've got to be ready. You've got to be ready. It comes with things and you've got to be ready. It's going to present itself in ways that you didn't even imagine, but you got to be ready and studying your word and really getting in there and making sure that you have something that you're creating that space. You have a space for God to continue to do the things through you that he wants to do through you. That is very important um, because that little bit that you have when you're only doing a little bit, even that will be taken away from you if you're not careful because it, it's not, there's no substance to it. There's no depth. You're not allowing it to be developed into something else. You're just staying right there. It's just right there on top. Um, that, that, that reminds me, sorry, I was looking for something else. That reminds me of the, here we go. So right there in, in chapter 13, the parable that I said he started to do that first parable. And then the disciples was like, let me talk to you for a second, Lord. What about what's going on with these parables? The parable that he was talking about was this. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow, and when he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. That's that word that that did not get anywhere. It didn't go anywhere. You were not ready. You had not put yourself in a position to soak up that word. It it didn't really it didn't really stick. It didn't really stick. You may have encountered it. You may have had someone to tell you something or prophesy over you or pray over you or whatever, but it just didn't didn't go anywhere because of the position that you were in, because you were not creating that space for it. It said, some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. There was no depth to it. There was no depth. It didn't create, it didn't, it didn't take root. You may have heard it, but it did not take root because of the ground. Because of the ground, the ground was not prepared. It was not a ground that had been tilled and prepared for the word of God to receive the word of God. We had not been going and using our resources to find out about God and to see what we can do to become um, uh, more in the know, uh, have more of a relationship with him. Um, and when the sun was up, they were scorched because they had no root. <laughs> they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. The other fell unto good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. So that ground is our part, our part that we're doing, our part that we're doing. Obviously, there will be seed sown, and God will do that. But we have to do our part to create that ground, to, to make sure that that ground is ready to receive so that it's not scorched by the sun or um, it's not choked out by other things that are planted. Um, so we've got to make sure we're doing our part. That's all I'm saying. I, know, I feel like a tape recorder. I feel like I've said this several times, and I'm so sorry if this sounds so redundant, you guys. I'm sorry, but this... This, ish, this situation prompted me to make sure that I put some emphasis on that. It's so important, y'all, because I could have easily been swayed. I could have easily been confused in that moment, but I felt like I was vigilant in that moment. You know, um, there were some things that I had wrestled with with God already. I had already been studying and, and asking God certain questions and being inquisitive and looking to find the answers and using my resources. And I had been doing all of these things. And so when they began to talk, I began to, to, to realize that, that the focus was being switched away from the finished work of Jesus Christ and, and, and put on to this person that they call the prophet, which is completely opposite of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Any prophet, any disciple, any person that was anointed by God to do his work always pointed back to him. When you are taking that off of him, and placing that attention on something and someone else saying that there is more work that was done after the finished work, then there is a problem. But if I had not looked, if I had not studied, 
then that moment would have just been another moment of confusion, another stair step for the enemy to take to get further into me to create the separation between me and Jesus. Therefore, starting the cycle of causing me to fall away, causing me to self-destruct because I now am completely confused. I don't know who I am. I don't know who he is. I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know what anything is. I don't know what's real and what's not. Keep counting on your ignorance. I've said it before. Y'all, I love you. And I just want us to do what we need to do. Okay? Um, I hate to make this sound so legalistic. You know, you know study and, you know... I hate to sound like a, I don't know what I sound like, but I hate to sound like I am, like it's something you got to do, like something, you know, that you're required to do, you know, but we need it. We need it. it it's, it, you know, this is how we survive. This is how we survive. If not, anyone's going to be able to come in and, and, and choke out that seed. Anyone is going to be able to come in and, and scorch that seed that, that, that God has given us. And we can't be that because we'll never be able to stand firm and be who God has called us to be and reach those things that God is wanting to bless us with when we are constantly in a state of confusion and constantly able to be swayed by any and everything. Okay, so we got to be ready. These challenges, these attacks, these things will not present to you in a way that is initially off-putting. They are tailored to be very close, very similar to the truth. To parade as an angel of light. But we have to do our part so that we can be in the know. So that we can discern like okay lord wait a minute no because this is different than what you told so this is what me and you already been talking just imagine you having a conversation with someone very close to you okay and then you go somewhere else and they start saying something different than what you've already been talking about with your close person relative whoever you're gonna be looking like but um no no wait a minute you know um, but if you haven't heard or talked to that person, that close person in a while, in a long time, or if when you do talk to him, you just, you know, like, Hey, what's up? Then if somebody comes in and says something, you might second guess it real quick. Cause how do you know that that's not true? Cause you ain't even talked to them in forever. Like perhaps it is. I don't know. I don't want us to be in that state. If you feel very shaky and out of control when you're in that state. Because you can't combat what's coming at you. You know it sounds off, but you don't know what to say because you don't know. Because you haven't spent that time. Let's not be in that place. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. I hope I'm not beating a dead horse, y'all. Love y'all so much. I hope this helps somebody. Listen, my walk with Christ has been one that I feel that I was meant to share with you guys. And so... I thank you so, so much for joining me on the walk. Bye.